what's potential Faith is instrumental, uh You need patience, uh That breed greatness, yeah You hear the passion in every one of my statements It's TP, you know you know the location Mama taught me to persevere We still put in work that shows on when the curtain's clear Immunity bill, we proving the will We grooming the skill Spread love to the community, feel you heard? Along with Julian Pollard, I'm Darren Duarte, your co-host of the Team Pollard Podcast. We've been going around New England, focusing on New England fighters and their journey. We have some of the biggest talent coming out right now, right out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yeah, I got it right, yeah, Tonka. Lawrence, yeah, Tonka. Tonka. That name carries some weight already. I done yes, seen sir. the man work before. 11 and 0, nine knockouts already. 90% are going down. What's happening on Friday or Saturday? What's happening on Saturday? Saturday? You already know what time it is. You see what the, the percentage is. Yeah. I don't do what I do. You know, I've been out the year for, on the ring for two years. So uh, now I'm coming back. I had a little bit of political issues with one of the high up promoters and stuff like that. So now I was independent, trying to think. I got out of my contract right before COVID, mm. which made me a mm. year that May. Um, that inactive rush. in the ring, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So now, uh, prior, I just signed a management deal with Ryan Roach, Fighter Locker management so this is the start you know what i'm saying i would say i'm uh starting from the bottom <laughs> what can the fans look forward to now that you're back uh just a better me you know i just came back from helping george cambosis uh prepare for teofimo lopez wow. i was one of his main sparring partners so uh i learned a lot there uh worked with different trainers uh built the team around me got my brothers in the back view right here that 100%. that helped me you know just my team um Got a management, so you should just be seeing a better fighter in myself, you know. Now, because you, you brought this up about your political issues with mm -hmm. your other management, is there a lesson for other fighters that you want to talk about there? Is it a lesson to yourself and a lesson for other fighters? Um, yeah, just just trust people. You know, if you, it's one thing to say you trust people, but but know you could really trust them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And don't tie into anything, you know, just from the word of mouth. You know, somebody could promise you something, but. Do you own promise research? is only yeah. 100%. Promise is only good 100%. if it's kept. Do you, you own know? research? I hear that. Exactly. Julian, any closing thoughts? So, as a as a game plan, if you don't mind sharing, mm -hmm. what do we expect to see you do to this guy on Saturday? What's going uh, I'm a, I'm a, he got a little bit of mileage. He's 45 veterans, so okay. um, not gonna take him lightly. You know, I've done that For with sure. opponents in the past. You know, sure. take him a little bit lightly because of the record might be upside down. But now we're seeing in boxing, those upside down guys got mm -hmm. everything approved. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Not in a lose. So. Just go out there, do my thing, be myself, and when, when I'm myself, I'm the, I'm, I'm the best, you know? And on this night, super lightweight Adrian Tonka Sosa battled Danny Flores. The fight went the distance, eight rounds, but there was no confusion on who controlled the match. The judges awarded Sosa a unanimous decision over Flores. It was the main event at Mosley's in Dedham, Massachusetts, and the boxers didn't disappoint the crowd. We have with us tonight, Adrian Tonka Sosa. What were you feeling tonight? Uh, I felt a little bit rusty, um, two years off, like we talked about. Yeah. Um, tough opponent, man. You know, can't judge a book by durable his cover. Guy, durable very guy. Very durable. Um, in the eighth round, I heard him. Winston in there, you know, huffing you the perfect. You heard he was him more than the eighth yeah, round, was, man. He was very hurt. I thought they would have stopped the fight, but, you know, could have asked for a better performance for two years off. You know, I was accurate. Um, just like I said, my time was off. It, you know, sparring is not fighting. Fighting is different, you know. 100%, Chan. What, what did your quarter say during the fight? Um, thank you to Mark, you know, uh, Olympic trainer. Just came back from the Olympics in Tokyo. Uh, great advice, you know, just keep my composure, use my jab, try to keep my range, change levels, use feints. Everything a great trainer would tell a fighter. I want to uh, cue up uh, this video, if, as you can see here. Yeah. Uh, I want you to take us through this. This is towards the to, towards the middle of the fight. Uh, tell us what we're seeing, because he throws some he throws some wild punches, but you kept your composure. Ooh, that's pretty, champ. Nah, it's Let a little, that ride, it's a little bit of work. Yeah. You know, like I said, time a little off, range a little off. Savvy guy, you know. Like I said, he had mileage. Forty-five veteran. You can see he has some tricks. Uh -huh. You know, but uh, as the competition gets better, I'll get better. So, champ, those are the kind of rounds that are gonna help you come out of this transition of COVID yeah. and get back on track. Yeah. What's next for you? Definitely, I'll just sit back with my management team, see what we can go and get next. You know what I'm saying? We got a couple of opponents lined up. Who do you uh, want, champ? I got I got my eyes on some dude that fought on the Mike Tyson undercard, you know. Okay. So 
I don't know his name like that. He's from Africa. You know, we got to work on a visa and stuff like that. But yeah, he's very yeah, tough. Yeah. But he uh, one work. of the opponents, 12 and 2, yeah, definitely could get that he work. He can get that work. Definitely. All right, champ. Well, I'll give you this. You know, the day before this fight, you told us you guaranteed a win. Yeah. And you did it. Yeah, yeah. I could have I could have stopped him, you know, but... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not disappointed with my performance, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with my management team, I want to thank Ryan, my family, I got family from Springfield, family from New York, I got, I got man. people here, I got family, Big home team you know, out here tonight. big home team, yeah. let's see how it comes. So the crowd's coming through, yeah, good time. job today, Thank Sosa. you, man, I appreciate that. Although Tonka says he's rusty after two years off, he did get expert help from Olympic boxing trainer Mark Gagaro, who spent time with the Team Pollard podcast after a busy fight night. Trainer Gagaro had four of his fighters competing, two during the day, and the two at night were Troy Anderson Jr. and Adrian Tonka Sosa. Do you do this all the time? Yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's the life. It's a, that's the life. Usually, the, you know, it's not a double feature, so we usually get one time, but we're here since, you know, one o'clock this afternoon, so it's been a long day. And, and, and your, your day or month or past couple months have been extremely busy because you're just back from Tokyo. Yeah, 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 I just got back uh, in late August. I was there for almost three months out, out there for the Olympics. So I'm finally getting home and getting situated here, and, you know, doing the stuff I like working with my guys. So. Can you talk to us a little bit about the Tokyo experience? And uh, I don't know, was that your first time on that level? Or? Uh, well, I've been working with Team USA for about four years. Um, so I've been with the with the same team, and we awesome. built up to that level. For sure, man. Uh, that was my first Olympics. You know, I've, wow. I've been to a couple world championships. It's been a, it's been a great experience, you know. I'm ready to be home for a while though. It's yeah, a lot of travel. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. It, it really wore you down a little bit, so. But it was worth it. It was a great experience. For sure. What does it take for, um, obviously, for a fighter and a trainer to be in such demand to make it to the Olympics? It's a long road. It's a long. Yeah, it's a long road. A lot of work. It really, you know, it's a grind. And very few people can make it to that level. And say they made it to that level, so it's you know, a lot of respect for your work, coach. It's uh, no, I, I, it's yeah, and I, the and I respect that. Yeah, I respect that. It's the fact that a fighter can get to that level. It's it, it takes a lot. So it's, that's it's some really, equal want and desire from you and the young men you're working with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they gotta they gotta put it in. Not, not everybody gets a lot of luck involved too. So 100. You know. Talk us to you had Troy Anderson tonight. Troy Anderson won, I think, in the second round. Describe that fight. And what were your thoughts? What was great about uh, Troy? Was there anything that he needs to work on uh, that you saw? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a great opponent for him. He was a tough game opponent, tall. Mm -hmm. So he had to work on some things, you know. And, and the kid came at him. He didn't. He wasn't backing off. He wasn't letting you know letting the the fight come to him. He was going after Troy. So he made Troy work, you know. And he actually, you know, he he made Troy actually dig in a little bit in that first round because he, he wasn't I don't think he was expecting the kid to come so hard right um, and then the second sure. round he got into a flow and rhythm. he talked a little bit about that wanting to set up a certain punch to the body I believe he was talking about that a yeah. little coming out of the corner yeah, did we he were, execute well with that eventually it, it eventually. took a little find yeah. to find yeah, it took him a yeah. while to find it you know that's that's part of the learning experience it's only a second pro fight right so it, he's got to learn that and you know that's did he look like how did he look through camp in your eyes were, were you pleased with what you were putting out there yeah i think this Pretty was his, sharp this was his best camp as far as like kind of he was mind body was, spirit yeah he was actually he was taking stuff in and understanding you know usually it's just go 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 get in shape and now he's kind of picking up it was an involvement in this camp i think so yeah and i think the next fight if it'll be a little quicker is going to put him right back a little even sharper so coach um talker told us that it sounded like, hey, he said, I've been off for a while. I'm a little rusty. Uh, was he being hard on himself, or do you agree with that regarding tonight's fight? I mean, I think it's hard. You got two years yeah. trying to get, especially jumping into eight rounds again with a, with a game game opponent who is not easy to get out. No, that kid um, was durable. You got to, yeah, and he knows how to be, he knows how to hold. He knows how to be slick and, and not slippery. Yeah, uh, and I think I think he did a great job being being patient and not. 100%. Trying to rush it and not overdoing it, you know. So he tied himself out. He was sharp the whole way. He looked collected the whole yeah, way. I thought. That's a good word for it. And, yeah. I, and I think, you know, if he pushed too hard, there's a you never know. You get caught. Punch yourself stupid, out. You get butted. Yeah. So I think he, he did a smart move. Get the rounds in. Go on to the next one. Oh no! What grade will you give Tonka uh, tonight? I mean, it's a solid. It's, you know, I would say C plus B minus is a good grade for me. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, not gonna yeah. give an A unless you know. <laughs> it's a tough coach. Yeah, it's a tough coach. We like it. I mean, it's good. It's, it, it was a good solid upset. effort. I think he, he can go. He can get way more high. He can get a lot better. You know? What do you give a grade for yourself with it? I, I was I was a C plus. I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Ride or die, coach. Yeah, I like yeah. it. We, we saw we saw uh, two uh, two good boxers uh, who came out victorious, uh, and we know you had a lot to do with it. 
appreciate that. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Congratulations on your success. A lot of respect for what you're doing, Coach. You. Glad we got a chance to talk. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, it. All right. So we just talked to a trainer who had two fighters here. He's been to the Olympics. And that's not an easy feat to win, like you just said. Not at all. For not a fighter all. and a trainer. Seriously. I, I'm, I'm, the more I learn about this camp, uh, with Troy Anderson's coming out of, with Tonka Sosa coming out of, those are two quality fighters we saw tonight. Some guys that are making their way in the career, one making his pro debut, one guy that was 11-0, improving to 12-0. Um, he didn't get the finish tonight, but he showed some real, some real muscle coming out of COVID, coming out of a long layoff. That's hard to do. Um, fighting is fighting, sparring is sparring, training is training. There's levels to it all. And uh, he came out, and I think they did what they're supposed to do. And, and, and the coach has been warned, too. He's just coming out of the Olympics. There was nothing easy about their task in getting here. And coming out victorious says a lot about that camp. We also got a chance to step into the camp of Boston's own Troy Anderson Jr. Anderson was scheduled to go four rounds. He completed his work in only two. We're at Troy's second time out. Second fight, yes. Second sir. fight out, fighting at featherweight. Featherweight. Champion out of Dorchester, Mass. Dorchester, Massachusetts. Hell yeah. <laughs> so my man was clocked in and locked in early. We're here at the Vertex promotion. Uh, Troy, talk us a little bit about your fight, about the rounds, kind of what the challenge was of the evening. Uh, my fight, it was, it, was a, it, was a good, it was a good opponent. It was pretty long. So what I was trying to do was figure out, I know I wasn't going to like over jab him. So what I had to do was go to my bread and butter, which is the two to the body. So what I was trying to do was make sure I land at two, which was important. It was set up, open up also more other shots that I started to throw, like as far as the hook, the, the body shot. Then I could start throwing a straight two to the head. But once I started, no, I started testing the body. That's how I know it was easy for me to start testing them. Did you expect uh, to finish your business in two rounds? I did say two rounds to somebody earlier <laughs> today. I did say two rounds. You took a claim it, bro. Claim it. <laughs> yeah, I did say two. We want, we want you to take a look at something for us. Okay. Um, take a look at this clip that we have. Take us through what, what's going through your mind at this point. Right now, I'm just trying to walk him down because I know I can overpower him. He wasn't really throwing that in too hard. So what I was doing was walking down to get him to where I wanted, where I wanted him at. And then once I got him to where I him at, I started to dig my punches. I was either doing one shot or I was coming up with two. So I know he was going to fall for one, and it was going to, lead to open up and lead to another side. Was, is that because kind of something hurt. you saw in the, in the film or the first round? Uh, yeah, my coach just told me to keep testing to the body. And mm. then he goes down. He goes down right there. Yeah. Mm. That's what I did. Once I see him start folding, that's when I start putting the pressure to him and start going from the head shots. So, so Troy, I, I noticed you keep a pretty tight high guard. Yeah. Is that how you always train for? Uh, I'm usually always normally slicker, but okay. I know when he's a little bit longer, it's, it was kind of like hard for me to to be much slicker and, and counter it as I wanted to. So what I did was just let him touch the glove, let him touch the glove, and I just kept walking through his punches. Like I said, it wasn't coming as hard. So when I kept the high guard and kept walking forward, I was able to get to where I wanted to go, and that's why I was able to dig. But if I was somebody my height, I would let me like, be more, be more slicker and be able to like know I would be able to reach him. 100%. Like, an overstep or so. 100%, 100%. You know? uh, what's next for you? What's next for me? Uh, right back in the gym on Monday, and then start getting prepared for uh, November 20th. Probably back here with Vertex Promotions again. So you'll be back in this building, Vertex Promotions, yeah. November 20th. November 20th, yeah. third bout. Third bout. Do we expect another knockout. Of course. 100. Well, percent What round, Troy? Third. Third round. Oh. This time. Oh. Hold me to it. Well, you, locked saying, in, you, locked in early. On. Are you saying third round? You don't even know who your opponent is. I don't even know who my opponent is, but we, we gotta know, round. man. Nah. We get into the work. Well, that, that's that's that confidence right there, man. You know, just gotta keep building the uh, keep building the confidence up, keep building my record up, uh, getting better, and also uh, I'd like to thank my team, you no know, Nano Boxing Club, Mark Gagaro, uh, Kenny Scatter, uh, Joey Mills, people that was working in my corner, of course my manager uh, Ryan Roach, also you know, and uh, shout out to my pops John Haley, uh, my best friend Davon. 100%. You know, you know, all that's the, the home that, team, home you know, team. Everybody that's here that's well, how, how do people find you? How can they follow you, Troy? Uh, you can follow me on Troy Anderson Jr. on Instagram or on Facebook at Troy Anderson. But I mainly use my uh, Instagram, so Troy Anderson Jr. All right, 100%. All right, Troy Anderson Jr. from Dorchester. Knockout, second round. Yes, sir. All right, man. All right, we'll you see you in the next one, Troy. Yes, Thank sir. You. All right. Well, good luck, Troy. We'll be back with more boxing after this. All the way from Ireland is Tom O'Toole. And Tom, you had quite a night. 
Yeah, it was good to get the first one out of the way. It's been two years since I've boxed, like, so to be able to come over here and have it, bring all the all the Connemara people out and people, family from Chicago and stuff, you know, it was great. Big following here and, you know, two, like two years since I fought, so happy to get out. So, so you talk about the layoff and I think it was, you said it was because of COVID. Yeah. So what was training like for you in that process? How'd you deal with that? Well, I, I kept, I kept training. Um, so I knew I didn't, I was meant to be fighting last January in national championships, but again, they got called off. So I was, I was only training. I took a, I took a little break when COVID first started, but I went back training. I was training solid for over a year, like without any fights, like, so it was hard. But last three months I picked it up because I knew I had this date. Let's talk about the, the knockdown you had and you did it in the first round. Yeah, so I actually came out. I knew I knew the opponent was fighting. I knew if I was able to catch him clean, it'd be that'd be it. But I wanted to try and get rounds in. So even when I knew I had him hurt, I didn't rush it. I wanted to kind of work on my boxing. So even the first three seconds, I just threw a few jabs. I wanted to feel it out. I haven't been in the ring in so long. I didn't want to just go in there and. Let's talk about the the knockdown you had. I knew I I was trying to step back a bit. I knew I had him hurt. I think I dropped him twice at that point, and. Uh, I knew he was hurt, so I was there and I was still trying to pick my punch, but I wasn't going to wait around. I seen the opportunity, so I went for it. I just threw a, I wanted to go two hooks to the head and then two hooks to the body, and that's kind of what I did, yeah. Train to finish, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Double two, congratulations on your Thank win, you so and good luck to you in your career. We hope to hear more from you, Thank you. I in the future. Thank All right. Right, Thank Thank you. Double Thank you, two. Here's a fighter who's local now, used to live in Hawaii, and Eric, <laughs> you had a fight today. Didn't last very long, did it? No, they uh, they usually don't. There it is. <laughs> that's, like it. that's confident. Last like three it. have been first round knockouts. Uh, we had a 30 second knockout, minute and a half. I think this one was a minute and a half as well. So do you go into your fights expecting that now? I, I actually do expect that now. Uh, with these opponents, I get them out of there like I'm supposed to. Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, I, I can appreciate that. Speaking from a fighter that ended in most of his fights and knockouts, that's how you want to be. So tell me a little bit about camp and your process in getting here. Who, who, who you've been working with? What was the sparring like? Talk to us about that. Absolutely. So uh, I actually have a really good camp out in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I moved out there to train with my coach Hector Bermudez. Uh, he has seven world champions, uh, I believe, uh, including Javier Fortuna, TJ mm -hmm. Dotney, uh you know, a few others. I, you know, I Abraham Supernova. You working so, with him as well? Yeah, I actually spar with Abraham Supernova. Um, a few times in the last few getting months. Getting ready for this camp. Getting ready for this camp, getting ready for the last fight. We actually, you know, spar together all the time. I spar with TJ Dotney as he was getting ready for his Ray fight J. with Mick Conlin. Ray J. Bermudez. Um, Brandon Udrago fought awesome. tonight. Uh, more than I can name, he has tons of high, high level fighters. So you're getting that high level work day in, day out. How does that Absolutely. build your, your mental in coming into this fight? I have full confidence coming into these fights. I, I, I know that nobody trains like I do. You know, I, I know nobody has a team or, or a coach like I do, especially around here. You know, I, I've seen the whole boxing scene, so it really makes me comfortable going in these fights. I have no nerves because I know no one's doing what I do. Next we have uh, November 20th. I'll be going 5-0, same place right here, dead in Massachusetts. Oh, and uh, after that, January 22nd, same, same place, I, I believe, right here. Yeah. Locked in and Joe, locked in early six and, and all. Yeah, 6 and 0. My soon. man. Julian has a team Paula Jim. Eric Goff is a professional boxer who's wait, 6 and 0? 4 and 0. About to be 6 and 0. Soon to be. Soon to be. So 6 and 0 by January. I got, yes. I got dates booked. Uh, we, want, we want to thank Celeste, the therapist, yes, yes, yes. for bringing Eric to us. Yes. Celeste, the therapist, also works out the team Paula Boxing Club. Yes, yes, I do. And she used to train with Eric Goff. Yes, I do. You had some great company. Yes, I did. Yeah, I so I I was looking for Eric and I found Team Pollard, and so I was like, you gotta meet Eric because he started me on the boxing like trail. So yeah, I'm excited about being here right now. Awesome. Yeah. So you know, the fact that you you've trained with Eric, yes. you trained with Julian. Yeah. Boxing is in your blood, huh? Right now it is. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Both of them are very hard on me. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm yes. Sure. All right. We didn't mean to put you on the spot, but we just wanted to thank you for bringing Eric over, and also thank you, thank you, so you for uh, for training with both these men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, thank take you care. So All right, All right. then I'll do it again for this edition of the Team Pollock Podcast. I'm Darren Duarte, along with JP, and we have Eric Goff here with us now. So long for now. Thank you.